Not not a softball question. It's kind of difficult to answer this question that you've given me, but I'll go ahead and try my best. Fine art is a is a global community conversation where as humans we bring pieces into the gallery and show them and start discussions around the pieces. Pieces of art that are good candidates for fine art are things that expand our understanding of what it means to be human. It's things that communicate something that's interesting to people, that sparks people's curiosity. And often the pieces that are the most interesting to people are ones that push on the edges of technology and show us what's possible for us as humans in our era right now. Photography is a fantastic medium for that because of the advances that have been made in both camera technology and in printing technology. There's usually a level of mastery. There's usually a level of attention to detail and, and beauty in the production of the piece. And so it's, while yes, we can make lots of copies, at least the pieces that I've been working with, these like acrylic pieces, there's a lot of expense involved in creating them. And I wouldn't be able to create these pieces if I didn't have the fine art platform to do it in. I don't see a problem with any work of art being fine art and being part of an addition. I, I think of sculpture first off, where it was often cast bronzes and, and sculpture cast in other materials were often parts of additions. So it doesn't make any difference whether it's part of an addition to me, I don't think. And it's really important the person interacting with this specific work of art and whether there's another one like it somewhere else doesn't seem relevant. You know, I think, you know, in my mind at least, art has everything to do with whether or not the audience is moved by it, whether or not there's like this transformative nature to what they're viewing. And so there's a threshold there. And whether it's photography or an oil painting or some like sticker on a lamppost, all of those things in my mind have the ability to be transformative. So it has nothing to do, I think, with the medium or how it's conveyed to, to, to a viewer or a listener. And so photography, I don't think is automatically disqualified from being fine art just because it's easier to reproduce just because the, the artist or you know the photographer may have an inclination someday to create an, an additional print or addition of that image. That question gets more, more into you know, the monetary aspects and the collectability aspects and the exclusivity aspects of art. And I don't think I'm qualified to answer those questions, but I do feel pretty confident in saying that photography, just like a Persian rug or an oil painting or, or whatever has the ability to move and transform the viewer. So in itself, I do believe it qualifies as fine art. Whether or not the reproducibility aspect muddies the waters, um, I'll let the next guy answer that. <laughs> Technique and availability make fine art in any genre, in my opinion. But in this genre, because we can more easily reproduce, we must be especially selective about printing technique and the number of editions that we release. And really what we're talking about here is the basics of the law of supply and demand. What makes a photograph valuable is when you come up with a limited edition, so you, you know, there's scarcity, and you sign and you number the amount of images that can ever be reproduced from, you know, like one particular image. And then the value goes up. It's kind of the difference between something that is mass produced and something that is fine art. So you're kind of taking something and by doing this, you're making it fine art by putting that value of scarcity in it. And then technically, you know, in the old days, there was film. Once you had the limited edition, you were supposed to destroy the negative, which I know that never happened in real life because I couldn't imagine ever destroying a negative. You know, and then there's kind of the honor system. Then when you have reached that edition that you promise this will there will only be 50 of these or 25 of these, and you've made that promise that this image will no longer be produced anywhere or, or be sold to anyone anywhere. Okay, that's where the value is put on, and that's what makes it fine art. I guess for me, what makes my photographs or what I try to take as fine art or is when I create a photograph, I'm hoping to convey an emotion or feeling or something that I saw at the time. And once it's produced and I put it out into the world, that's it. I don't go back to it. 
I don't re-edit anything. I usually only go through it one time. If I don't get it right or if the picture didn't turn out the way I wanted it to or it's not telling the story that I wanted to, it doesn't go to the world. But once it goes to the world, that's it. If it's 30 or if it's 100 photos or if it's just two or one that I've decided to put out, I guess as a human being, you have to trust that if I say I'm only going to put out 30, that's all I'm ever going to put out. And you have to also trust that if I say that I'm not going to go back and retouch it again, I'm not going to. I have other things I want to go shoot and other feelings I want to convey and other subjects I want to tackle. So I think it's when there is no alternative purpose, just kind of the photographer answering that instinctual and intuitive urge that exists in that moment. I was thinking about this and what I came up with was that a replica should not take away anything from the creative process of what the artist has done or has completed. Uh, printmaking itself is an art and can be an art. You know, there's, there's a feel for this. It's an extension of what the artist did. For the artist to go to somebody and put their trust in them to create what they did with their heart, with their mind, you know, with some some intent. And I think it creates a bridge between you and the printmaker. And I also like to look at it like you see drawings in a cave, right? So that's a stamp of time of however long ago hieroglyphics are. So what we're doing today, the contemporary art is a stamp in our time. Somebody a hundred years will be digging through, maybe if it's a good will or something and see the, the time, you know, and say, well, this was a hundred years ago, you know? Who is this artist? I'm gonna look this artist up. And that way you're still making connections long after. And it lengthens the artist's longevity in the art game too. So I really do believe that it does not take anything away from what the creative process of the artist has done. A photograph can be fine art despite having additions because it's a record of a unique event. It doesn't diminish the Statue of Liberty that you can buy little figurines of the Statue of Liberty or that you can, you know, buy a coffee mug with a copy of a Van Gogh painting on it. Uh, the only difference is that instead of copying objects, you're copying an event. I think what makes brings it to the level of fine art is that it's just so unique. It's like a fingerprint and each reproduction that you do, even if it's coming from cut and paste, it's just such a unique story that the artist is trying to tell and anything can be added to it, but in such a way that is just like is surprising to the audience. The purpose of fine art is to be creative and to express yourself. I think photography is just a medium which artists can accomplish that. So even if we're able to make additions or prints of it, I don't think that it should take away from the actual art and the artwork itself because it still speaks from the artist to the people. And I feel like that's the purpose of fine art. I think a photograph can have that ability to be fine art when it goes beyond the literal representation of a scene or a subject, and it expresses the feelings or vision of the photographer. Photography is fine art because of the process of the translation from the three-dimensional world to the two-dimensional flat photo. That process is where the fine art is. And within that process is the added layer of me, my shutter speed, my f-stop, my lighting, my angle, that added layer of me makes it fine art and not just a stagnant POV. Photography is a cousin to filmmaking. And in filmmaking, you have this method called mise-en-scene, where you create the scene, mise-en-scene. So that's what I do with my particular photography. And that's where the fine art is in my work. I'm creating the scene and that's, that's the fine art. Well, in my opinion, fine art uh, should not be categorized by either the ability or inability to easily reproduce the finished piece. Fine art photography has more to do with what the artist has created rather than what the camera has captured. The creative process driven by the imagination of the artist is expressed in the work produced regardless of the medium. And this, I believe, is what makes uh, fine art. 
Well, I think it's the aesthetic that really makes it fine art. So you have the photographic perspective of the artist, which is really a unique view. However, with photography, a small edition really has that collectability because it's a finite nature, just the same as, as an art print would be. And in combination, it has a little bit more of an elevated reach. I think the lack of an addition is not what defines fine art. Fine art is a creative endeavor that is meant to be appreciated for its imaginative or aesthetic content. And I absolutely believe photography has a place there. With technology, obviously, a lot of painters and other artists do offer fine art prints. And what I do like about additions is that it gives people who might not otherwise be able to collect art the opportunity to do so. What makes anything art? Fine or otherwise? It's the vision and the execution of the artist, including the medium she chooses to share with the world, whether it be prints, canvas, stamps, books, etc. And the artist is always involved in the details of these decisions. For example, the print quality, how and where it's printed. These all play key roles in what the medium looks like in the end. Unfortunately, photography gets a bad rap in some art circles. Some see it as just replicating the world as is. To that, I'd say there is no inferior or superior art, and number of editions doesn't determine whether or not an artwork is powerful, meaningful, moving, makes you feel something. It comes down to the passion of the artist to create using her unique vision that has developed over her lifetime, and translating that based on a mastery of techniques specific to her medium. With photography, you can create anything from an iconic portrait to abstract art, and it can be accessible and enjoyed by many without losing any artistic value. I think what makes collage art uh, fine art is what it conveys and how it's reproduced. For instance, many of my collages have uh, or are made with old pieces of paper or leaves from, from plants or petals from flowers or just pieces of fabric. But I, I think it's the artistic impression it has in the admirer that makes it fine art. It also can be what materials I use to reproduce it. The end goal is an aesthetic goal, not a functional one. Well, because I work exclusively with old school cut and paste collage, the original piece I create has all the soul and carries the sweet, tender emotion of the original work. It does. Ask anyone. I think scarcity is only one possible facet of an artifact's value. It's certainly possible to make unique garbage. So the fact that a work can be conveniently reproduced by the artist doesn't necessarily devalue the vision and craft that went into the prototype. A facsimile might, by definition, be less precious than a one-of-a-kind artifact, but when an artist puts the same vision and care and integrity into reproductions, into editions of the original, what you end up with is art that is both valuable and accessible.